Hi everybody, today is October 26, 2013. I was looking at today's radiation levels on the map at netc.com and I noticed in Rapid City, South Dakota, the levels were quite high. We don't have any nuclear power plants in our area. My first thought was the jet stream for Fukushima, but other indications of surrounding areas that didn't match up. Counts per minute were 365. They consider low 155 and the high 481. So I thought, why is it so high in Rapid City, South Dakota? I then found some articles about open pit uranium mining in the Black Hills of South Dakota near Mount Rushmore. Evidently, there's over 3,272 open pit abandoned uranium mines in the states of Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Colorado. Now here in the area of South Dakota where I live, I had heard how thyroid cancer was high. Evidently back in the 50s and possibly the 60s, the government did tests on sparsely populated areas here in South Dakota by deliberately dropping radioactive materials to see how it would affect people. But I didn't know about the open pit uranium mining. This woman here talks about the Riley Pass mine. It actually has warning signs that's posted warning people not to stay more than one day within a one year period because of the radiation. This woman who evidently worked with a nuclear physicist from the University of Michigan, he said that the radiation levels that he visited with his students were higher than those in the evacuated zone around Fukushima. There's a lot of things that our government does and knows about that don't tell us. Right now they're looking for volunteers for a baby tooth survey to assess the effects of nuclear fallout from above ground nuclear testing. They're looking for genealogy volunteers for a project of a unique historical and medical significance. In the 1960s, thousands of school age children sent their baby tooth to the baby tooth survey to assess the effects from nuclear fallout from above ground nuclear testing. Over the 12 year life of the program, 320,000 teeth were collected. Examination of the teeth revealed higher than normal levels of strontium-90, leading to the partial test ban treaty of August 5th, 1963. A lot of people probably had their teeth sent in by their parents and never knew that they were a part of this program. So now the Radiation and Public Health Project is conducting a follow-up study to assess the incident of cancer among baby booners who exhibited higher than normal levels of strontium-90 in their teeth. They are looking for volunteers to help catalog information from 85,000 baby teeth from the program to help locate the tooth donors. Information about these donors provided about their teeth will contribute to our knowledge of the long-term effects of low levels of radiation exposure. The project organizers need volunteers to scan information cards and to transcribe the scanned images to facilitate content with these donors makes me wonder how many of them are actually still alive. Volunteers in or near Ocean City, New Jersey can help by scanning the information cards. Interested volunteers anywhere else in the world can help by transcribing the scanned images created by the Ocean City volunteers. So some interesting facts that I found out. Evidently, the radiation has leaked into the groundwater there in Rapid City, so hotels have radiation in their water. And then I wonder about Grand Junction, Colorado. Is there an open pit uranium mining there too? Because it was mentioned in this other article. I just find it amazing that we have places right here in the United States that has higher levels of radiation than they do in the evacuated areas of Fukushima, Japan. All right, bookmark my site. I'll keep you up to date. Please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.